It's been tough for me to get some junk silver lately. Even though silver's going up, people haven't been selling it. But finally, my dealer called me up and said, Rob, I have $185 in face value for some silver. Would you like it? Of course I said yes. Hey everyone, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, we've got a big old bag of 90% constitutional or junk silver, if you will. And this bag has dimes, quarters, and half dollars in it. It's just everything he had on hand. I said, whatever you got, I'll take it all, and he gave it to me all in this bag. Now, he did say there's some older stuff in here, like you can see a barber half dollar right there. There should be some barber dimes, barber halves, barber quarters, of course, standing liberties, and then for the dimes, we should see some Mercury and Roosevelt. And I would think that other than Kennedy's, we will see some Benji's and some Walker's. I do see them. So a lot of older U.S. constitutional silver, $185 in face value. I think for today's hunt, what I'm going to do is take all of the Roosevelt dimes out because I won't be checking for any varieties for those. But after I do that, I'm going to stack up all of the dimes, the quarters, and the half dollars, and we'll do a junk silver purchase and hunt to see if we have any better dates, key dates, varieties, or even any better condition ones, like this 1964 quarter looks pretty nice. Let me go ahead and dump this bag out. We'll go ahead and stack them by denomination and type, remove all the rosy dimes, and I'll give you another look. Now that is a lot of silver. I do see we have a severely damaged one right here. Holy smokes, that thing is destroyed. But what are you gonna do? You get what you get, can't throw a fit, and hopefully we have some better dates in here to make up for ones like that. All right, let me get to hunting and stacking, and I'll bring you back in. I know I just brought you back in, bud. I don't know if you guys noticed it in the previous clip, but I was pulling out the stuff that's damaged and I started to stack the 64 Kennedys and I noticed we have a Stone Mountain commemorative. Holy cow, that is awesome. A 1925 Stone Mountain commemorative just sitting in this bag of goodies. Was not expecting that. Let me go ahead and put it to the side for now. And if I come across something else pretty cool, I'll bring it back in. Well, this could be a really cool bag. I know he hasn't looked through it, but take a look at this also in the bag. An 1829 capped bust, half dollar. Yeah, it's got a hole in it, but who cares? Holy cow. I will take that as well. Unbelievable. Just still continuing the sort, starting to put piles up and take a look at this. Seated Liberty Dime, 1891. We'll take it. Still sorting, and we have another Stone Mountain commemorative. That is two in this bin. Another quick update. Found another Seated Liberty Dime, 1875, Philadelphia. We're about halfway through the sort, and uh, we found a proof quarter. 1958 proof quarter. What a beauty. All right, I finally got the sort done, and I'm going to show you what I got here. These are all the Roosevelt dimes. Like I said, I'll just be rolling them up. I do not need to worry about these. I may check some of the earlier dates to see if we have something cool, but... There's really nothing that special about rosy dimes unless they're in BU condition other than putting them in your album or stacking them. These are the quarters, the Washington quarters, and I will definitely go through these for any of the varieties, better dates, and things like that. Now, on the mat, I have that capped bust, the two stone mountains, the barber halves, walkers, Benjis, and two stacks of 64 Kennedys. 
I will do these last. I will be checking for varieties on those. There's that proof quarter. We got a stack of, well, I guess not a stack, a handful of Barber Quarters, SLQs, and then we have the Seated Liberty Dimes, the Barber Dimes, and the Merc Dimes. I'm going to kick it off with the Merc Dimes because really I'm only looking for better dates. I'm not going to be checking for too many of the varieties. I'll be looking for better conditions, see if there's any full bands. I highly doubt any of that. But mainly looking for better dates for these, and then we'll go on to those next. After we finish the dimes, we're going to knock out the two small stacks of quarters and then go on to the G-dubs and then finally move on to the other stuff. I will also say that we had three coins in here that are pretty beat up. Uh, they're not better dates. It's a 63 Benji, a 41 Walker, I believe, or a 42 Walker, and a 54 Denver Quarter. Those are pretty much not stackable in their current condition. I will just throw them with my other junk silver that is in terrible shape. I have a bag of that stuff. All right, let's kick it off with the Merc Dimes. Fingers crossed for a 26S, 26D, 16D, of course, or any of the teen stuff in decent shape. Of course, we'd also love to find a 42 over 41, either the Philadelphia or Denver. That'd be cool too. I'll bring it back if I find something, or we'll do a Merc Dime wrap up. So we finished the Merc Dimes. That's the 40s, 30s, 20s, and these are the teens. We did have two 1916s, although both of them are Philadelphia. We had three 1918s, two Philadelphias and a Denver. And then we had one 1919, and I think it might have been a Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Nothing spectacular, no 42 or 41s, no key dates. We had some 26s, but both were Philadelphia. So nothing really that awesome in the dimes. We'll stack them up. We'll move on to the Barber Dimes, and of course, I'll give you an update on those two seated Liberty Dimes as well. So I've got the dimes laid out. This 1891 Philadelphia seated Liberty Dimes, probably in fine 12 condition, worth about 15, 20 bucks. And the 1875 seated Liberty Dime, probably in a VF20 to VF30, about a $25 coin. I'll take those at junk silver prices all day. For the Barber Dimes, mostly common dates, but I will zoom in on three of them. This is an 1897S, 1898S, and 1900S. This 1898S is actually in decent shape. Let me put it back down so we can zoom in properly. You can see we do have some of the word liberty in the headband. Now an 1898S is a better date as far as in higher grade. An 1898S had 1.7 million minted, and in a VG grade, it's worth about 15 bucks, but in a fine, it gets to $32. And I don't know if this is gonna qualify as fine because it does say all letters in Liberty need to be visible with some week. So it's probably not quite at a fine, but it's definitely, definitely a VG8 no matter what. So I will take that all day in that condition, in that grade, Probably a 15 to $20 coin. Plus, we have three S's and a 1916 S. I got to check against my album. I don't think any of these will upgrade, but perhaps one of them will fill a spot, especially these S mint marks. We'll have to see. We're going to move on to the quarters next. For the pre-Washington quarters, really nothing to get excited about. We have a handful of slick, no date, no mint mark SLQs type 2. No date, but have mint marks type two, and only one dated SLQ, a 1926 Philadelphia. So nothing really exciting there, and neither in the Barber quarters as well. We have a 1907 Philly, a 1908 New Orleans, a 1915 Denver, and two 1916 Denvers. We'll go ahead and just roll those up and move on to the GW quarters next, and that will take a pretty big sort. So I'll be back after I get them sorted, and I'm only looking for the DDRs and DDOs and a few of the RPMs and OMMs for a few years, and I'll cover that when I have them sorted. All right, we got the GW quarter stacked. These are the 50s, the 40s, the 30s, and the nice 60s that I'll check for any varieties. These are all the ones that I'm just going to roll up, and for sake of time, because of their condition, I'm not really going to check for any of the varieties on them. Yeah, there could be a Type C Reverse Denver Mint or a DDR or a DDO or other things in there. But in the conditions they're in, other than the Type C 64D, that might be the only one worth checking. And I might look for that at the end. 
But I'm going to go through the 50s only because I'm putting together a secondary album and I need some dates to fill it up. So I'll check for those. And I also will look for the 50 D over S or S over D while I go through those for the album. Now, the 40s, there's a lot of double die varieties, and I will get to that when I get to the 40s. Let me go ahead and check the 50s against my album and for the over mint marks, as well as the nicer 60s for any varieties. And if I have any, I'll bring it back. But either way, I'll bring it back before we move on to the 40s. So unfortunately, nothing in the 50s was usable and no varieties, except for we did use a 1950D for my backup album, not the D over S, of course. Now we're gonna go through the 40s. I'll be paying special attention for any of the 49s because the 49P is a better date with less than 10 million minted. And even the 49D is just over 10 million minted. So I'll be looking for those. And of course, I'll be checking for the 43S DDO, the 43P DDO, the 42D DDO, and the 1940 Denver, which is a better date as well. Let me start going through these and see if we have any of that stuff. And I'll bring it back in after the 40s have been sorted. So no fun stuff in the 40s, and I went ahead and took the liberty of checking through the 30s as well. We had a couple of 1934s, none of them the light motto, none of them the double dies. We had some 35s, nothing special about that year. A couple of 1936s, both Philly and both not anything special. We had no better dates. 1937s, we had both Phillies, neither of them the double die obverse. That would have been cool. 1939, we actually had two Philadelphias, which are common, but we had three 1939 Denvers, which is a better date. Now, there's just about 7 million of those minted, and even in G4 condition, they sell for a few bucks over melt, and in extra fine, they're about 10 bucks. We might have one that is VF30 at the best. None of them are great. These are pretty much less than G4, probably AG. That one might be a high fine or a low VF, but either way, nothing really worth mentioning. I just wanted to bring them up to show you that we went through them. Now that we've done the dimes and the quarters, we have the half dollars. And for sake of time, I will go through all the 64 Kennedys off camera checking for any of the DDRs and DDOs for the 64 Philadelphia and Denver mints. And after that, we'll see if we have any better date Benjis. Let me go ahead and run through the Kennedys now and bring you in if we find anything cool. Well, this is pretty amazing. I've only gone through this many Kennedys so far, and this one caught my eye because of the toning. It is in fantastic condition. You can see it was BU, probably an ender of a roll, to be honest. And it's a Denver minted one. I stuck it under the scope, and that's why I got my gloves on now after I saw what happened. Take a look at this. A 1964 Denver DDO FS 101. Clearly doubled on trust, doubled on God, and doubling on the Liberty up here. I'm sorry. At the base of the Y, the Seraphs on the T. I mean, this thing is an absolute beauty. And I think it's in that 64, 65 range all day. And it might even get a plus. It might even be a 66 plus. I am not going to flip this up. I'm going to put it in a Mylar flip. I'm going to submit it. I'm going to submit it because of the toning and the condition and the fact that it's the FS 101 hard to get DDO. Not very many toners in there. This one's toned and it's a DDO. Unbelievable. That's a great find. I'll bring you in some more information in just a second. All right, so up on the screen, I have the 1964D half dollar FS 101. And if I hover over the spots I showed under their scope, you can clearly see that it's doubled on the motto in God we trust all across. On top of that, it has doubling at the base of the Y and splitting on that right serif. So we know without a doubt, I have a 64D FS 101. Even in a mint state 63 plus, it's a $75 coin, but at 64 plus, it's 165. At 65 plus, it's 300. And not that I would expect we'd get a 66 plus, but if we did, it's a thousand dollar price guide value. Although they're selling for between five and 800 bucks. Now, if we can get top pop at a 67 plus, that would be awesome. Either way, I am very happy with this. 
I don't see them being able to say artificial toning. This is how I got it. This is how it looks. And it even has the indications of that it was at the end of a roll or just not stored properly. But either way, it's got a little bit of toning on the reverse and it's in fantastic shape. I'm not sure it will grade anything higher than a 65, but man, I'll take a 63 plus or a 64 plus, plus it will look good in a slab as well. I'll be submitting that for grading. That's the find of the hunt so far. I mean, other than some of these other goodies as well, which we'll get to, but man, we're off to a banging start. Only about 12 Kennedy half dollars in. Well, after kicking off with such a hot start on that 64 DFS 101 Kennedy, we didn't find any of the varieties for both the Philadelphia or the Denver Mint. So that's kind of a bummer, but that's a heck of a find. I'm going to run through the Benjis and Walkers, see if we have any better dates, any little varieties. And if I have some, I'll bring you back in. Otherwise, I'll give you a wrap up for those two. So for the Benjis and the Walkers, nothing in the Walkers exciting. For the Benjis, we did have a 1949D and a 1949S, and they're both not in that bad of shape, and they are better dates. Anything from 1949 is a better date for a Benji. No 55s, though, and uh, I was hoping to grab one of those. We didn't. Still got some better coins. Nothing that I'm going to hold on to because I already have mint state ones for my collection. Just wanted to show that. Now let me run through the extra stuff, like the barber halves and all the other goodies, and bring it back in with a wrap-up of what we found for those. So for the extra goodies, we had these barber half dollars a better date 1915S and slightly better than G4 condition. I'll have to check it against my album. Bunch of common ones. This is a shame. It's an 1897 in probably VF condition and it's pretty beat up. It's damaged. VF condition would probably put it about a hundred dollar barber half dollar. You have clear liberty. Everything looks great on it except for the damage. The damage makes it not worth much, so it's a shame. Went from a $100 coin to pretty much coal value. Unfortunate. The 1893 is probably in G4 condition. No liberty on the headband, but there is some damage on it as well, unfortunately. This would have been about a $20 coin, but with that damage, it might be a little bit less. So we had a couple of potential better ones and a better date, about $15 coin. Other than that, the rest are pretty much just coal, and that's what it goes for. This capped bust half dollar from 1829, it's not the variety over seven, but it's a nice coin. In coal condition, it's probably about a $30 to $40 coin. Having that hole in it makes it coal. Otherwise, it would have been a $50 fine. I think I need one of these for my typeset. I'll have to double check, and even though it has a hole in it, it can hold a spot right now. The other good finds were the two Stone Mountain Commemoratives from 1929. They're not in the best shape, probably AU condition or so. That puts them about 50 bucks a piece, and the toning on that one is fantastic. Now, I recently found one of these in one of my half dollar hunts, so I don't need one for my typeset. I'll probably offer those up on a future auction. At the end of the day, I had a lot of fun going through all this junk silver. Hopefully, you had a lot of fun doing it with me. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone... Happy hunting, happy stacking, and thanks for watching.